Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I have here is f of x equals cotangent of pi over 4x plus 3 pi over 4. And what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this equation, so, uh, or graph this function. So to do that, we need to kind of understand what the transformations are, as well as what the parent graph looks like. So to understand the transformations, we have to kind of know the transformation uh, form of our equation, which is a times cotangent of bx minus c plus d, where a, b, c, and d are all going to affect our graph in some way. And you can see that really I don't have an a and a d. The only thing I have is a b and a c, um, which, is going to affect my, which is going to affect my graph. So how are they going to affect the graph? Well, to determine that, there's one thing I kind of say is like my basis for every time I'm graphing a trigonometric function is to determine the amplitude, which cotangent, these do not have amplitude. So we just need to worry about period x scale, um, phase shift, and vertical translation. Okay. So when I'm looking at uh, determining the period, all we have for the period is pi over b. To find the x scale for cotangent and tangent, I just do period divided by 2. Phase shift, we take whatever's inside of our function and we set it equal to 0. And the vertical translation is d. Okay, so that's how we use these kind of letters up there to be able to determine, um, you know, how our reflections are going to be happening. And we also have a ref we also have a, which would represent reflections. But um, in this case, we obviously see that a is positive, so we don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and determine our period. So we're just going to have um, b is going to be the letter, um, the variable that's in front of your x. So I'm going to have pi divided by pi over four. So to simplify that, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, 4 over pi, 4 over pi. So I now just have a period of 4. So then I take my period and put it in here. So that's 4 over 2, which just equals 2. Now to determine the phase shift, I'm simply just going to take whatever's inside my parentheses and set it equal to 0. And then now solve, um, solve for x. So to do that, I need to subtract 3 pi over 4 on both sides. So I have pi over 4 equals negative 3 pi over 4. And oh, that's an x. And then again, just like I did over here, multiply by the reciprocal to get rid of the uh, pi over 4. So therefore, I have x equals those delete out, so negative 12. Oh, no, those will do that out too. So I just have a negative 3. OK, perfect. So when looking at kind of understanding of you know, what is this graph going to do, where is this going to be at, let's go ahead and take a look at um, what the parent graph at least looks like and then how we're going to transfer it. Now, remember, the parent graph, these are um, harmonic uh, functions. So they're, they're going to continue on and on forever. But a lot of times, we like to pick where, where we can kind of take a snapshot. And that's what we call the initial period. And the initial period, we like to start at 0. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of draw you what one initial period would be, actually two of them, um, for the cotangent graph. And pi halves. Now, the initial um, or the regular, not the regular function, but just the function f of x equals cotangent of x. This is with no transformations. OK? With no transformations, has an asymptote at negative pi and at pi. And, oh, and at 0. And it takes the form like this, where it kind of rises to the left and falls to the right. And you could see that the reason why I call the x scale 2 is because all I'm really concerned about is where's the asymptote, where's the x-intercept. So the distance between the asymptote and the, and the x-intercept to the asymptote, the x-intercept to the asymptote is always pi halves. And that's for. Um, my parent graph. Obviously, we have some transformations that are going to affect this. But when I'm graphing this, usually we like to say start at 0, draw the asymptote, and then do the x scale to find the um, x-intercept, and then do the x, next x scale to find the asymptote. So that's what I'm going to be applying to my new function. And obviously, I'm going to want to keep the shape of the graph the same. So rather than starting at 0, I always like to start at my phase shift if my phase shift is other than 0. So in this case, you can see my phase shift is at negative 3. Okay, so I'm going to say, all right, well, here's negative 3. Now, the x scale is 2. So that means to find my next, um, uh, 
the next important point. So remember where I said where I started, that was the asymptote, right? So then I need to go two more units. So that'd be uh, negative 2, negative 1. That's going to be my next intercept. Go two more units. That's going to be at 0. And this would be at 1. That's going to be my next asymptote. And you could even say, OK, 0, there's like the y-axis or the f of x-axis. All right. But remember, the x scale tells you um, the distance from the asymptote to the intercept. To the asymptote, then the next intercept is going to be at 1, 2, 3. And then the next asymptote will be at 4, 5. And we only need to include two periods. Uh, the period, just make sure that the distance, the time it's going to repeat itself is going to be four units. One, two, three, four. Cool. One, two, three, four. Perfect. So now I just make sure the graph goes through there. It rises to the left, falls to the right, and approaches the two asymptotes. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Not the most beautiful graph, but that is the way that you can graph uh, f of x equals cotangent of pi over 4x plus 3 pi over 4. Thanks.